What's up, YouTube? It's Tyler with um, the last major, one of my last major Kenmore acquisitions. This machine is courtesy of Tom Gasco at the museum. Um, this machine was once on display at the Vacuum Museum, in fact. Um, another one was donated by a member down in North Carolina, and the original hose was also donated. Um, so, I emailed Tom and kind of harassed him. Hopefully I did not harass him, but I was very persistent about asking him if he would sell it and when. And, um, some time went on, and then my friend Andy, he talked to Tom, and I finally got a price. And I emailed Tom and said I would do it. And we started going back and forth again about figuring out where, when, and how I'm going to get the machine. Well, I couldn't pick it up. I couldn't get down to Missouri. Just not enough time for it, and just really no time. My house is a mess, by the way. And there's Shiva. So I finally, you know, I emailed him and said, you know, I'll give you a little extra money if you'd ship it. So thankfully he did ship it and he did an excellent job with the shipping. Um, and this is the 1962 Kenmore Whisper Tone Model 90. This is the year after this girl right here. So I now have both of them. Somehow I managed to acquire both of them. So this machine uses 5010 bags. If you look inside, there's 5010. The bag setup is completely different. Um, this machine is in really good shape for how old it is. It's not perfect, but who cares? It's a very, very hard to find machine. I'm not sure how many have survived. I do know there's one up in Canada with a collector, Tom's. There's a parts machine that I know it, it's sitting in a warehouse down in Tennessee. <laughs> and then this one. So those are the four I know. Um, Hands and donated the extra one to the museum and donated the original pistol grip hose, which is, I would love to see one day. I hopefully I can get the one for this one, the hose and the power nozzle. So, that's how I managed to get this machine. Um, I want to thank you, Tom, and then I want to thank you, Ken, for the lady, Ken Moore. And then Ken also had bags for this machine, because my Model 75 uses the same bags. Why? Hey, truth be told, I have no idea. It's Sears, they were weird, and everything. But, you know, at first glance, it's like, wow, that's pretty similar. But it's not. This is a different, um, it's like a serrated sort of like they machined it i don't know how they did that i i think they machined it, it looks like something done on a lathe or whatever or something to that effect um the switch is different the pedal is a little bit different this one's a little i need to tighten it down i mean it was at a museum so i'm sure it was used by a lot of people and demonstrated a lot so um, there's the performance indicator, also different. And then, there, this, um, says the manual, in the manual, you're supposed to put a crevice tool up to this, and it'll clean, that's like a filter for the performance indicator. Um, obviously the color is different. And this is the Model 90, this is not a Lady Kenmore, this is just the Model 90. And this is Sears newer tooling that has the triangular dusting brush the new Sears Sears is on everything um so and then it's got like a greenish hue to it to the to that tool it's got like this greenish hue to it 
I don't know if that's just my eyes, but they do look very similar. You'd have to see it in person to believe it. it it's a little dusty. I cleaned it up. Um, there was some writing on it and whatnot, and I dust. I cleaned it up a teeny bit. It's got wand storage underneath. Um, put it up on its back. Yep, there's the bottom. The cord is not original. That cord is real way too long to be stored inside the machine. Um, that's the bottom plate. This machine, I believe, was only available in spring and summer of 1962 because I had the 62 catalog for fall and winter. And this machine, sorry, autofocus, my, this machine was gone. So I'm I'm gonna run it with a later model power mate, and then this hose is a very early Kenmore hose. It would have possibly went to this machine. Um, the earlier ones had a short, stubby end, and then the pistol grip had like a pistol grip coming out right here, and then it had a short, stubby end, and then the pistol grip right in here. It's hard to I have to see pictures of it, but the ends are all the same. And this hose has patent pending on it still, so this is a very early hose in very good shape. This was from Jimmy. Jimmy shop down in Tennessee, but I'm gonna run it really quick. I'll run it, and um, you'll get to see it run. So here it is all set up, and I will switch around. That still works. I'm gonna shut it off really quick. I just don't want it to arc or anything when I plug the power mate in. Um, this one does have a suction control valve on the hose. The pistol grip hose did as well. power mates and everything skip on this carpet and I cannot do this with one hand this down. so it's kind of heavy and bulky to maneuver I'm sure it was not fun to for a second it's not fun to use it for a normal housewife or just a spare house. It's okay. dust all the time here with the dog hair and then just dust in this house every almost every two or three times a week I've got to dust this house um, yeah it's it's not fun dusting all the time 
switch it down to low. It's much quiet. It's very quiet in either setting, especially low. I'll just get some of this dog hair. Some of you are like, wow, he's putting all this dust in this bag. It's a vacuum cleaner. It's meant to be used. But then, you know, you can use the suction relief. Sounds pretty good for 54 years old, I think. Now, the bag indicator does not work when it's on low. It only works on high. I'm going to put this hose back. I'm going to put everything away and I'll be right. So there it is. I'll run out one more time. It does work barely. Switch it up. Bag indicator works. It's just such, in my honest opinion, it's probably one of the most attractive machines ever made. Down here is the vent. So this wand gets warm when you have it on the machine. All the air has to go through um, the bottom plate. For some reason that doesn't stay closed. I'm going to look into that. But even so, it's a very quiet machine for, you know, for its day especially. I mean, it's not as quiet as a Model G. I mean, I think it's about as quiet as a Model G. Um, it's definitely a lot more unique than a Model G. But here are the wands. These have push, they have buttons. All the attachments have buttons. Um, very similar to the Lady, but yet very different. Um, same style. I think they just use the same moldings. Um, they are unique in their own aspect. They aren't perfect. No machine's perfect. But they are definitely a piece of vacuum cleaning history that not many people will get to see. Um, I'm very, very blessed to have both of these machines. I want to thank everyone who's contributed to my collection. I want to thank you, Tom, for selling me this machine. Um, base is all... I think it's made out of fiberglass. Same with that one over there. And you got Sheba over there. Itching yourself and grooming yourself. That's what you can hear in the background. But it actually it maneuvers fairly easily. But at the same time it's just such a bulky machine. I don't think they did very well in terms of sales and how how they were i mean they're very unique and very ahead of their time but the cord storage i think it would have been cool if they would have had two cord hooks back here there's no room for a cord winder they would have unless they molded something down here to put a cord winder in um but that would have even added more weight i think they're over 25 almost 30 pounds fully loaded and I imagine a housewife wasn't too happy. This machine was also $149 in its day with the Deluxe Power Mate, which I have never seen the L-shaped power nozzle for this one. I've seen two for that one, but I've never seen the one for this one. But I do have the manual for this one on PDF. Um, and it shows this machine and all its features. I'd like to find the manual for the one over there. But, um, those of you who know me, I'm going to show, I'll show these off to people that want to see them. Um, I'm not going to be, um, picky about who I show them to. Just need to take care of them because there's, there's none of them left. 
Um, like I said, that one's probably one of less than a dozen. There's, I don't think there's more than a dozen of those around anymore. And that one, I don't know if there's another one. I've never seen one. So, who knows? But they are very, very cool machines, and they are my dream. They were, have been my dream Ken Moors for a little while now. And I'm very, very proud to have both of them. So, this one had the newer tooling and all the other stuff as well. And it also had the sears on it. I think this is one of the first machines with sears on it. Because that one doesn't have sears on it. It's just Lady Kenmore Whispertone. So this one is the 1962 Kenmore Whispertone 90. Not Model 90, just 90. Um, and that's the Kenmore Lady Kenmore Whispertone. 1961 Lady Kenmore Whispertone. That's it. Um, and as you can see, both of them did exist because they're sitting right here right now. Um, swivel wheels, very bizarre. I do squeak. This one hasn't squeaked yet. I did have to grease that one, and then I had to grease my 75. I'm going to bring this one, that one, and then my 75 downstairs, all three to the convention. So these will all three be in operable condition, and will be usable, and they will be used. They will have um, be able to be used by collectors. I don't want to, I want to share them with people, especially younger collectors. I didn't know these machines existed several years ago, and when I started finding out about them, the more I knew about them, the more I liked them, and the more I wanted them. So, but, they are very, very cool machines. One of my favorites. One of the prettiest machines ever made, I think, and just such a bizarre look of design and here they both are in one shot that one's got 90 on the top why 90 I have no idea but Lady Kenmore Whisper Tone over there Kenmore Whisper Tone 90 very quiet and very bizarre, but um, I want to thank everyone who's contributed to my collection, and I want to thank you for watching. Um, another shout out to Tom for selling me this machine after being very, um, asking him multiple times about asking him several times about it. I wasn't, you know, it's not my nature, but something I really, really wanted. So, kind of a treat to myself as we're moving was one of the last, this is probably the, one of the last machines I'm going to buy while I'm still here. Um, I think I do have a bag hookup set up made for that one, so I'm going to test it out and make sure no dust leaks into the motor. Um, the motors are also the same for these two models. Um, I think double ball bearing, land motor, if I've read correctly on vacuum land, I could be wrong. I'm not a Kenmore expert, never will be. But I've learned a lot from Vacuum Land and from the guys I've talked to. Um, and then also research on my own and having the Sears catalogs and then having the machines themselves. That always proves a point. So I want to thank you for everyone for watching and I want to thank you for everything that everyone, everyone has ever done for me. I got a vacuum the rest of this rug sometime this morning. And... Um, I'll probably do a video with both of these. Might be doing a video with tomorrow morning. So I'm about to go to bed here soon. Put this on YouTube and then hit the sack. I got more packing to do, so. But thank you for watching, uh, and I hope you liked it. And please like and subscribe. And there will be plenty more of these two machines around and everything else that I own. Thank you.